So for medical errors, they will ask you this. And they have a really good little example or definition here. Um, but what they're going to give you is they're not going to say active errors have oh, an immediate impact, like an errors have, blah, blah, blah. What they'll say is, uh, for example, oh, the, the janitors have a new floor cleaning solution and it makes everything sparkly, but the floors are super slippery. And you'll have to say, well, that's an example of a latent error. All right? Um, because nothing's happening now, but people are going to start slipping. Uh, you know, and then they'll say something like, uh, you know, during intubation, uh, the patient's uh, trachea is bruised and blah, blah, blah. And you'll have to say, oh, that's an active error. Now, it's different from a never event because never events uh, are things like this. It's like you, you intubate and then, like, you, you you put a huge hole in their trachea and they get, you know, just nonsense like that. Things that, like, literally never happen. Um and of course, uh, medical errors should always be disclosed to patients. So burnout versus fatigue. I mean, um, uh, fatigue, the, the, the big thing here is one of them you don't care anymore, the other one you're just kind of out of it. So fatigue, obviously, you're just out of it. Um, you haven't slept a lot. Burnout is you just don't care. You know, you've been seeing, you've been seeing, you know, uh, you're in the NICU or something and all these these kids just keep dying all the time, and you're just like, I can't do this anymore. Fatigue is, you know, uh, you, for whatever reason, had like a 72-hour shift, and you're told, hey, you got to start all over again. Well, you're going to show up super tired, and you're going to make errors due to sleep deprivation. Okay. So root cause analysis and uh, failure mode and effects analysis, what they're going to ask you is similar to the different types of errors. So root cause analysis, obviously, if you're looking at the cause of something, it happens after the fact, so retrospective, and failure mode analysis would be forward-looking approach. So uh, I'm going to give you an example, and you tell me which one it is. Um, so you're going to start uh, an ICU, and you say, well, in order to, to, to make sure that uh, patients getting handed off from one doctor to another, there's no missing of information. The, the doctors have to physically talk to each other uh, for all their, about other patients for, for half an hour to make sure they're on the same page. Well, that'd be forward-looking approach. You know, you want to make sure that there's no issue here. A root cause analysis for the same problem uh, to make sure there's no uh, handoff issues in the ICU would be, hmm, well, they did talk to each other for half an hour, but um, there wasn't anyone to double check if what they were saying was uh, was up to snuff. You know, maybe some of the nurses had like updated information, and um, when one of the doctors spoke, he misspoke, and there was no one to correct him. So we'll need hey, we'll need more people uh, from now on. Would be retro a root cause analysis. You know, you can kind of flip these around however you want, but the idea is that one is clearly retrospective, and the other one is is not. <clears throat> and inductive reasoning is different from deductive reasoning in that deductive reasoning you go from big to small and inductive reasoning you go from small to big. In inductive reasoning you say, hmm, how could misplacing uh, uh, patient name tags lead to problems? And, um, and in deductive reasoning you would uh, find the problems and say what was the, uh, the cause of it. But again, that's neither here nor there really. <clears throat> 